Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. There is an odd expression in an Eastern Orthodox prayer that is connected to our reading from John's Gospel tonight. And it goes like this. We see most eloquent orators mute as fish when they must speak of Jesus, our Savior. For it is beyond their power to tell how he is both perfect man and unchangeable God at the same time. Mute as fish. It's quite a colorful way of putting it, isn't it? But there is. There is something that, that's beyond our power of explanation when it comes to just how we believe Jesus is both completely God and totally human at the same time. I mean, we'd probably have a lot easier time understanding if, if Jesus were either, well, just God pretending to be human, the Superman theory of God, or if Jesus was such a good human that he seemed almost divine. We could call that the Batman version. <laughs> Anybody tracking with that? You get that? Superman, he looks like a human, like Clark Kent, but he really isn't. Batman, he looks like he's a superhero, but he's just a really rich guy with a cave and a, and a car in it and a really good butler. Or maybe, maybe sometimes we, we find it easier to make distinctions like in the life of Jesus. Maybe we can process Jesus in the manger as, as a fully human baby that will one day change the world. Or we can process Jesus ascending into heaven in glory while his disciples look on, as long as we don't get those things too close together. It's as though there, there was a sweet little baby Jesus. And then at some point that we don't see, something happens and he is God in human form, changing water into wine and being transfigured on Mount Tabor with Moses and Elijah. But we can struggle. We can struggle to really take on board that the, the one-minute-old Jesus in the straw of the manger in Bethlehem also created the universe. That Jesus is not just King of kings and Lord of lords at at some point in the future, but somehow ruling in that moment in the dirt, in the dark. Well, good thing we have John chapter 1. And we'll turn there together now. This is on page 886 in the Blue Bibles. John chapter 1, page 886. Because while we might be very tempted to be as mute as fish this evening, as we contemplate the fact that, that the Jesus of Christmas, the little baby Jesus in the manger, is the same Jesus who created the universe and who hung on the cross for the sins of the world. Well, we might be tempted to be as mute as fish. Well, the Bible is not mute. And here in these first 18 verses of John, we see the identity of Jesus, the Son of God, and just what that means explained for us in great, precise detail. But the first place we need to start is with some vocabulary. John, you will notice, he, he calls Jesus the Word here in chapter 1. And in the Bible, the Word is... Well, it's a loaded term. To say Jesus is the word is, is not simply to say that he is a message from God or a, or a messenger from God. Well, before the time of Jesus, the Bible spoke of the word as the way that God creates. Psalm 33, verse 6, for instance, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. 
and the smartest philosophical minds the non-Jewish world produced, men who followed Plato and Aristotle, well, they also used this term, this term word, or logos, to signify the ordered nature of the universe. From their perspective, without God's word ordering the universe, without logos ordering the universe, there could only be chaos. Without logos, there's chaos. So by simply saying that Jesus is the word here in verse 1 of chapter 1 of John, well, he's already saying something both profound to both Jews and non-Jews. He's identifying Jesus Christ with the ordering principle of the universe and with God's creation. And he goes on, Jesus, the word, John says, was with God and the word was God. From the very beginning, in fact, from before the beginning, that's what that word was, is about. Jesus, the word, John is saying, well, he's not part of creation. At the beginning of time, he was. The need to be clear about this is what's behind those words we say in our creed every Sunday that, that maybe you've wondered about. You know, when we say Jesus is begotten, not made, that's what this is about. And believe it or not, there's also a Christmas connection to all of this. I suspect and, and hope you know that St. Nicholas, from whom in a roundabout way we get Santa Claus, well, he was a real person, a, a Christian bishop in a little town called Myra in Turkey. Okay, that's an inside joke. Mother Pamela has spent a lot of time in Turkey. And it's true. It's true that, that he did bring gifts to children at night. No tiny reindeer were involved, though. But there are stories, however, now admittedly they may or not, may not be true, that well before Nicholas was, was Saint Nick or even a bishop, he was a deacon and a bit of a fighter. Anyway, he got in trouble at an important church meeting for punching a priest named Arius in the face because Arius denied what John chapter 1, verse 1 teaches, that in the beginning Jesus the Word already was. The Arians, as the followers of this priest named Arius came to be known, they even had a slogan, they liked to shout about this, that went this way. They would say, there was a time when he, Jesus, was not. So you can see how important this language is. Now to get it back on track, Jesus, he, he wasn't made, he was at the beginning, but what was he? John says, Jesus was, first of all, with God, right? And the sense here is that the word, Jesus, shares a close relationship with God, but there still is some distinction. And John goes on. He says that Jesus was God. In other words, underneath that distinction, there's a deeper unity. So the first thing we need to know about Jesus, the word, the ordering principle of the universe is that he is God. He isn't created. At the beginning, he already was. And in fact, he creates. John says all things were made through him. But John has a lot more to say. Jesus, he isn't just the word. He's not just the creative power of God. He goes on in verse 4. In him, in the word, in Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. There are two important things here. First, Jesus isn't just a tool that God uses to create life. He's the source of life. And second, Jesus' life, well, it's for us. It's our life. The light of men is how John puts it. Through Jesus, John is saying that the light and life of God is available to human beings. And it's powerful. Verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So 
So go over what John has told us in just five verses. Jesus is the Word. Jesus was when the world began. Jesus created the world. Jesus is both in some way distinct, yet also the same as God. Jesus is our source of light and life. That's a lot for late on a Christmas Eve night. But hang with me. It's only after, after all this groundwork is laid, all these powerful statements about Jesus' identity are made, that John actually says the most revolutionary and challenging thing of all. Look at verse 9 with me. This is what John says. The true light, which gives light to everyone, is everyone's source of life and light, was coming into the world. Was coming into the world. And moving ahead to verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. All those things that John has laid out is coming into the world. And not only coming into the world, is made flesh, made human, and dwells with us, with all our limitations and problems and sins. And friends, this is where John goes off script. You see, up to this point, uh, Jews and non-Jews who might have been listening and nodding their heads to what John has to say about the word, because there's a lot of commonality here. Well, they would have, let's say they were at one of those symposia, you know, those events where everybody sits around a table and they drink wine and they have a discussion about philosophical ideas. This is the point where they would have spit their wine out and it would have hit the wall, because this is far beyond anything that they were expecting to hear. You see, it is one thing to believe in the word of God, as many did, co-eternal with God, creator of the universe with God, the source of light and life, the organizing principle of everything. I mean, influential Greek philosophers believed that. And they even used the same terms and technical words John is using here. But it is quite another thing entirely to say that this word would enter dirty and dusty and compromised and decaying creation. You see, the word entering creation, well, it's just not what anyone would expect. It's like an episode of that, that old show, Undercover Boss. You know, remember that show? But the boss, he doesn't just act like he is a low-level employee, but actually becomes one, lives on the salary his new position earns, moves out of the mansion, gives away the yacht, stops showing up at board meetings, and most strangely, submits to the terrible mismanagement of people that are actually his subordinates. That's what John is describing. And the result of this radical, to people at the time, almost unbelievable step? Well, this is what John says, and starting in verse 9. He was in the world... And the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own people, and his own people did not receive him. You see, in the middle of this powerful description of just who Jesus is, well, John reminds us of the, of the irony and tragedy that, that travels hand in hand with the gospel. Even the gospel on this Christmas Eve night. Jesus who is the word of God, who is the source of light and life, comes to us in the world that he created. And most of us, well, we don't know him. And we do not let him into our lives. But here's the thing. The world's mixed welcome, our own mixed response well, it doesn't make Jesus any less than he is. Jesus' identity as the Son of God, the Word of God, well, it doesn't rest on whether or not we can see it. Plus, 
John goes out of his way to say that even though many do not see, some do. And to the ones that do, he says, he gave the right to become children of God. So this is a lot to take in. Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, is the word who is with God and is God. In the beginning, he was already. Jesus is the creator of all that is. Jesus is the source of our life and light. And yet, despite all this, despite his incredibly exalted place in the in the boardroom of Universe Incorporated, he became flesh and dwelt among us. Not ultimately as an undercover boss, but as a suffering servant. Being mute as fish about these things can seem pretty tempting, and maybe even the safest strategy, can't it? But isn't it good? Isn't it glorious that John 1 is not mute and can speak for us and to us about Jesus, about just who he is? Friends, the miracle of Christmas is not maybe what we think it is. It is not that there was this little baby, small and frail, who grew up somehow to change the world. It is that this little baby, small and frail, was great and glorious and God at the same time. As we conclude this evening, I want us all to do something. I want us to think of a nativity display. Maybe one in your home, maybe the one we conveniently have here at church for you. Got it? Thinking about a nativity display? I want you to focus on part of that display. Focus on the little baby Jesus in the manger. Now keep that focus whether you're looking over here or thinking of one you can remember. And hear these words that Paul says about the same Jesus from Colossians chapter 1. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. What an amazing, glorious Lord and Savior we have in Jesus. Amen.